and I will certainly be reading every single comment. So make sure you get typing if you have any questions for our guest today, Rohan Jayavira. He's from the technology field. He has an entrepreneurship background. So if you have questions related to those as well, we'd be happy to hear from you. All right, we have some more books here. Out of Four, The Element. All right. And as the clock strikes 7.30, ladies and gentlemen, we are now officially ready to begin our discussion here this evening for all of us who just joined in once again. Welcome to Why I Read, an online conversation that is brought to you by Pick a Book. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, allow me to officially introduce you to this concept that we call Pick a Book. Pick a Book is an incredible initiative that was launched with the aim of igniting the love and the passion for reading. And as the name suggests, it's a club where readers can select a book, they read and research thoroughly and present the book as a summary before an audience. Pick a book not only inculcates the habit of reading, but it also helps to impart a wealth of knowledge while honing our readers' communication skills. Our discussion today, which is called Why I Read, is a pick a book initiative and it engages successful individuals, influential personalities in a conversation, asking them to share with us how reading has helped them achieve greatness, both personally as well as professionally. And we trust that everything that's shared today in this segment of Why I Read will add great value to you as well. Now, once again, let me remind you, for those of you who have questions for our guests, you're welcome to use the Q&A feature on this platform. Submit your question and we will be delighted to present your question to our guest. All right. With that, let me now officially begin by introducing our fascinating guest to you this evening, Rohan Jayavira, who is a man of many Hi. facets. Yes, hello, welcome to the call. Before I ask you to tell us a little bit about yourselves, let me also inform uh, everybody joining in that Rohan is an entrepreneur. He's a leader in the field of technology in Sri Lanka. And for those of you who've already read his profile, he serves professionally as an analytics delivery lead for Octave, the John Keels Group. He's assistant vice president at John Keels Holdings PLC. He's also co-founder director at Antira Solutions Private Limited. And many of you might also know him as the first representative for Google in Sri Lanka. Now, in my prior conversation with him, I have found Rohan to be somebody who's curious, who is not afraid to think out of the box, and he's also nurturing some very interesting worldviews. So with that, I'd like to officially say hi to Rohan. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you, Krishma. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's always nice. And obviously, this is something really passionate for me. I'm very passionate about. Uh, my family is very passionate about. So I'm so blessed to be part of this. Thank you. So at the very outset, Rohan, I know that I've only mentioned a few of your uh, credentials professionally, but you are so much more than yeah. that. So can you tell us about <laughs> yourself in your own words? I, I think similar to what we discussed during our conversation, I think I told you like it, none of that's actually really matter, right? Um, the way that I would like to identify myself and I think it's in my Instagram profile as well, like I'm a husband, a tata and a, and a greater fool uh, in that particular order. Um, for, especially for this audience, I think that's the way I would like to park it. The rest of it are just career stuff that happens to, you know, kind of a take shape and uh, take form as we go along. A uh, greater fool is uh, someone who believes that he can make a difference where everyone else has failed. Um, so for me, I, that's one of those things that I've always been trying to achieve and trying to do with my with my journey of entrepreneurship or uh, with all the other stuff that I try to do. So, I mean, for me, uh, Rohan is just simple. That's good enough. Fantastic. But I, I like this title of Greater Fool because as Steve Jobs had said, stay hungry, stay foolish. So I'm sure that's all of us joining in the call are hungry to hear more about your journey as a reader, which then in turn yeah. led you to be a leader. So let's start off right at the very beginning. What influenced you to pick up your first book? Tell us what books have yeah. meant to you from that time on. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think let me just provide a context and map dot the lines. I think it's always easier looking back and uh, connecting and dot connecting the line dots. Um, looking back, right? Um, so I grew up in a particular environment. Obviously, my era was pre-internet, right? And pre-internet, pre-Facebook, pre-LinkedIn, pre pre-Instagram, TikTok, and also Tinder, right? I mean, everything was free. Um, so the only thing we actually had uh, was something, and I think I remember, uh, I don't know, uh, the first couple of books I started really being fascinated towards 
um, I think uh, would have been, uh, I don't know whether you heard about a, Sing a Sri Lankan Sinhalese author called Kulasena Fonseca. Uh, so Kulasena Fonseca wrote these three adult teenage adventure stories, one called Tumya Halu Vikramaya, Kallandu Ve Mutukolle, and then there was another one called, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Somapura Vikramaya or something like that. So I read those three books and I got really fascinated. Then I evolved and I got into a college and I started seeing that kids were leading, reading a particular type of books. And I think uh, the book that I uh, started kind of obviously getting fascinated towards and started reading were things like the famous five, uh, you know, the, the uh, Nid Blyton uh, era, right? I mean, we all had that, I think, famous five and uh, secret seven and few other stuff. And that was the type. Um, and I think I must tell you this also, one of the facts uh, is that my English wasn't good at all uh, during that time. So a re a simple reading a book, which other kids would have done in about a couple of months, I would have taken like a lot more time because just to, you know, be able to understand the language as well. But I kind of, for some reason, my friends started, my peer group started reading. I also wanted to be able to talk to them about those ideas and stuff like that. Then, of course, you ended up becoming the, the early teenage years. You start getting into Hardy Boys. And there was always that the Tintin and the Asterix started happening. I know Tintin should have happened earlier, but for us, it was during the same time as Hardy Boys. And um, then there was a slightly more um, mature thing for the three investigators. Again, I think I remember Hardy Boys, we had this little internal competition in the class. Who reads all the books? Like at that time, there were like about 80 or 90 books. Uh, and I think, you know, you are killing and dying to find that one or two books that is nobody has to find out, get a hold of it and read it and say, OK, I've checked and I've read the, all the, the entire series. Um, started like that. And I think what is really interesting is that, you know, we didn't really have entertainment as much. Uh, we had probably a one TV at home and father used to watch, you know, either cricket or news or whatever. And maybe the mother used to watch the TV drama. So the only way that as children, our fascination and imagination start to grow. And I think that's why books are such a powerful thing. Um, you know, it kind of nurtures your imagination a lot more. Uh, the way that we found imagination and think about the world and the way we perceive the world was completely through these stories that we read, Hardy Boys and the Tintin Adventures and all that. And I think when you start growing older, I think I had a situation where I was really keen to improve my English. Um, I really wanted to be able to speak English really well because I think I told you, Trishma, this fact that I was, I didn't have a formal English education other than all level English in my, in, in Sri Lanka, right? Um, you know, so I was really committed to improving my English. And the only place that we could really start reading and really, you know, improving your vocabulary and all of that uh, were, were simply just through books, right? And there wasn't really a lot of content on YouTube or none of that were existing. Um, so one of the things that happened was uh, uh, my father took me and introduced me to the National Library. Um, so mm -hmm. I was very blessed that, you know, I used to uh, take a one and a half hour long bus ride one way. Uh, come on Sunday morning at about 8.39 to the National Library. And uh, I started, you know, kind of getting lost in those uh, bookshelves there. Um, I don't know, I've not been there for a long period of time. I'm very grateful for that era. Then I discovered authors like Clive Custler, Tom Clancy, uh, you know, even Daniel Steele. Uh, don't mind, I'm not ashamed to admit that I've read uh, Daniel Steele. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, Harold Robbins and all these authors. Um, one of the uh, book series that I really loved um, was obviously the Clive Custer's Dirk Pitt series. Um, there was one movie that was made called Sahara. Uh, Matthew McConaughey uh, acts on that. But um, there was one particular book I think for me was really stands out from that collection called Race the Titanic. Um, the Race the Titanic book tells a story about a particular uh, scenario where we just due to a military thing that has gone wrong and they need to... Uh, you know, raise the Titanic, which has now been underneath the sea for so many years, uh, to bring it up. And then they talk about the technology and everything that they have put in uh, through this agency called NUMA in the book um, to raise it up. And it was such an incredible uh, imagination. And it kind of was one of those things you discover about the immense potential, your ability to do something that is so fascinating and uh, you know type of a thing so Clive Kessler was uh, one of the authors that I've loved and then of course um, at about 
20s onwards, uh, things started to change a little bit. And I think I kind of moved away from the fiction and, uh, you know, stuff. And I read a few autobiographies. And I mentioned that one of the big books that I really loved was Autobiography, that, which in my head, I've read a few. Um, one real, that really stands out for me was the Andrea Gersi's book, uh, book, or book called Open, about his actual book. Because growing up, whatever tennis I watched, he was like this bad boy with a, you know, you know, he had the, the girls, the looks, the everything, right? Um, so he was like the, at the 20s, one of the guys that you really wanted to look up to. And uh, reading his autobiography was a really fascinating story. Um, today, I mean, I think, to cut a long story short, I mean, I think for me, uh, books I read is primarily driven by my interest at the moment. Um, I, if I'm to say that the last fiction, that fiction book that I read, uh, was obviously, uh, you know, Dan Brown's uh, Da Vinci Code. But obviously, because of the hype, I was like, let me just get rid of, let me start reading that. Um, and I read that and the Digital Fortress and Angels and Demons and the entire thing. Uh, similarly, I, I started reading Twilight. I'm not ashamed to admit it. It's one of the worst books in my mind, <laughs> written books. Um, I got, I barely got through like the first 10 pages and I said, this book is so badly written. Um, and I kind of stopped reading that book, uh, The Twilight. Uh, I know I'm going to disappoint a lot of people here, but that's the truth. Uh, it's just such a rubbish book. Um, You've but, actually yeah. quite a lot of uh, different genres you've been covering. I mean, you had yeah. fiction, you've had um, yeah. detective yeah. novels, and but let's oh, talk I, about it right now. Sorry, I apologize. I forgot to add. Uh, Fall of Moon Dust, Arthur C. Clarke. Uh, was one of the, again, a really interesting books I've read. Again, growing up early stages, I used to be uh, obviously Space Odyssey, all of those. I think if you look at it, it's all more or less like whether it is what kind of a genre, it's always been about this big imagination driven type of a thing. Uh, Fall of Moon does discuss about this uh, particular spatial that gets uh, breaks down in moon because we have civilized moon at that time by the, from that book. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I think that's, a, a, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, go ahead. So uh, I was going to say that, you know, with all these books that you've read, I'm sure it's, um, it's shaped your worldview in, 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 a, in a particular way. Let's talk about the current books you're reading and how that's yeah. helped you in your profession. Yes. Yeah, I think what is really interesting for me right now is that um, I read or I consume the word. I think the word I would use right now is consume. I consume books in three formats, uh, which we didn't have before. And I think because you, I think you mentioned that you should have a couple of books to show whatever I, I brought it actually. Obviously, uh, I think anyone who can afford it, um, I recommend that if you can get a Kindle, um, I would recommend that you do that because the reason is this has really changed to great extent. I do, my regret is I don't use it as much as I, I want to. And I'm not talking about it because I have some kind of a promotional agenda here. It's not that. It's just that a lot of challenges we have in Sri Lanka uh, about getting great books is uh, we don't really have access to books in stores. I mean, we don't really have, a, like in Singapore, there's a place called Kinakunya. You can go there and there are thousands of titles. You, I have spent days inside that bookstore in Singapore. Uh, we don't actually have things like that. And we don't have the latest titles coming in for different reasons. Um, and I think, but this will solve that problem for you where, you know, you probably can uh, get the latest books here. And I think for me, one of the things I try to follow is read as much as possible, more recent books unless it's a classic or something that you want to go back and refer to, uh, especially when, when it comes to technology and subject matter, that makes sense. So this is one. I'm reading a book uh, called uh, Advanced Analytics for Business, which is a technical book right now on this. Then obviously the physical book I read is one of the authors called Brett King. Um, I don't know whether you can see it. Uh, there's a bit of a light um, augmented. Uh, he's one of those really uh, fascinating, what they call a futurist, who talks about how banking industry uh, can help countries and everything uh, to grow and become, you know, but this book is a little different. This book talks about um, the, the next evolution of technology is to be able to augment uh, humanity and technology together much more seamlessly. And I think he talks a little bit about that. The third format, I think is really interesting where people, I think a lot of people grossly underestimate is to consume books in audio book format. Uh, for me, I have it in my phone here. Um, headphones on uh, when I'm driving to work or whatever, some occasionally or when I'm doing a presentation, when I'm prep, uh, I usually listen to a book and I listen to the book at two, two times the speed. It's very interesting when you start reading a book, listening to a book in two times or 2.5 times the speed, 
uh, it reduces the time, but uh, you know, that's the three things that I'm that is going on for me right now with books at the moment. What would what would be your favorite way out of all those three to actually consume a book? Oh, I'm a, I'm old school. I'm an old school. Yeah, so. you you like the, the... Nothing, I mean, for me, these are these are the immediate like these are shortcuts in way in way more of hacking to get to the content of the book. But there's something really romantic about you know carrying a book and holding a book and reading it and flipping the pages and smelling that um, the smell of the pages when it's a new book. Um, uh, 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 Call me, call me, call me stupid. No, I think a lot of our book lovers also love that. The smell of a book, the look, the feel, the touch. Uh, what do you feel about uh, underlining stuff, marking pages? Do you do that or do you feel that's absolutely a no-no when it comes to handling books? You know, that's an interesting thing, right? I mean, I read, or oh, I was listening to a couple of books um, recently and one of the biggest challenges I also have is the fact that, you know, you read a book, it's great, content is awesome, you remember bits and pieces, but or remember the concept, but a lot of examples and a lot of stuff are forgotten forever. And I think I told you this uh, as a practice that I, I usually read a book and I give it away. I One of my philosophies is that after I read a book, I never hang on to the book. I usually give the book away and uh, I don't expect it back in return. Um, but the, the, the situation is that for me, it's kind of a get in the way of enjoying the book. Um, so in ways... I know that maybe I need to be putting more effort to taking a bit of a highlighting and putting something. And I actually deliberately uh, force that onto another book I read uh, like uh, before this. Um, now I like the fact that I can do it. Do I do it as much as I should? I don't. Um, do you think people should do it? I think it's a personal choice. I think... Uh, it won't work for fiction for sure. For nonfiction, maybe yeah, it may work to have a little bit of post-it notes pasted here and there and a little bit of a, this thing. But here's the thing. This solves that problem with a touch of a button. So that that's a lot easier there. All right. I, I know, uh, me for one, I, I don't yes. feel like I've read a book unless I have underlined it, had post-it notes, ah. had multiple <laughs> bookmarks. I don't feel I've read that book. So my books are very well used. Now, uh, Rohan, okay. even though you say that you have read books and given it away, I also know you have plenty of books uh, in your house. Tell us about how you've arranged that. I know you have a very... <laughs> yeah. um, I think I, I, I was... When Raghu called me up and said, listen, we want to do this. And honestly, uh, with... with with, uh, I want to uh, disclaim this, uh, give you the disclaimer that I, I honestly wasn't as aware about uh, this thing and I heard about it and I went through uh, multiple of the pre or previous recordings and the Facebook page and I was like, this is such a cool idea. I mean, this is such a great thing. And I was like, so excited to join. I told Raghu, listen, dude, I'm in, right? I mean, if I have to force my way to do this, I mean, I will do that because I think it's really such a great thing. So, and I took some pictures and sent it to Raghu as well about the books I had. And I, I personally think I even Raghu didn't expect me to have that number of books. I have a quite a collection and I think me and my wife, both are, we are huge lovers of books. Um, and I will tell you some interesting stories that me and my wife, our first more or less entrepreneurial venture is a bookstore. We started a bookstore in Sri Lanka um, called the Design Store. And uh, the idea was my wife, uh, we were both in Singapore at that time and we saw this like Kinakunya type of huge collection of books and I was like, why can't we have that in Sri Lanka? I'm sure there's an audience. Uh, of course, we, re we didn't understand. We started it because we love books, uh, but we didn't understand the business. So it was obviously not a, didn't go as planned. Uh, but uh, answer your question, do I arrange it properly? Uh, not really, but I'll tell you something that happens. I have a mental mark in my head of where my books are, right? And if I go to a shelf, a little bit of here and there, I can find the book because I think it's almost like subconsciously, I kind of know, I don't arrange the books, uh, you know, like saying the genre wise or author wise or year wise or whatever. I, I don't I do not do that, um, but I just make sure that I, I, I kind of, make sure that it's protected and kept in a way that it is, you know, very well uh, this thing. But no, I don't think I arrange it like that. I don't think it's necessary. I think the fun is answering your question about why I read across so many genres. I think it's because the fun is reading about different things. Um, it doesn't have to fulfill. A, it doesn't. I think the idea is that you should never feel reading a book should be a task. Right. 
and if you make it a task is why i think it becomes harder but if it's something you enjoy um you know i think it is discovery is so amazing right it is so it that's is. what yeah. So while I um, ask you your next question, I'd like to once again yeah. remind all of our participants who've joined in that your questions are more than welcome. If you have anything you'd like to ask Rohan, whether it's about books or whether it's about technology or entrepreneurship or his life journey, you're free to type in your questions in the chat box and we'll be happy to address it to our guest here in our segment. So while we wait for those questions to come in, uh, Rohan, maybe you'd like to tell us a little bit about uh, the favorite books that you have. I know you have a couple of books uh, right by your side. <laughs> Take us through a few of them. Yeah, I, I don't have the, my favorite book. As I said, one of the things I do is that I, I read and read. I'll, I'll tell a couple of books that have been influential. I, I wouldn't go to the, I, I think we, we connected on this. And I think I thought a lot about, do I really have a book that I say like, you know, it's my favorite, right? Um, no, I, I don't think I would have something called a favorite, but a couple of books that have been really influential for me had been, you know, in the recent times, have been a book called Zero to One by Peter Thiel. I don't know whether, it's a very small book. Uh, it talks about being able to solve mysteries in life uh, so that, you know, you can actually further the humanity and stuff like that. Another book that for me very personal is that I think a lot of people know that I'm a co-founder of a of a digital agency called Antira Solutions, and uh, it's it's entrepreneurship, right? And I think it's 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 messy, it's difficult, it's it's painful, uh, all of that. And I've been reading books about you know is there a, is there a parallels? Is there are there things that I could learn from reading from other people's stories? And there was this book by Peter. You know, I forget the author. I don't want to mention the name because I don't know. But the name of the book is Hard Things About Hard Things. Um, it's a brown color book with orange letters on the on the cover and that book really stood out for me and today I recommend that book if I could I will make it mandatory for all the entrepreneurs um, it's a it's a fascinating book about you know not only about uh, thinking about an idea trying to build a business around it but a lot of people don't talk about the messy middle right the difficult part is not that, that at the beginning you're all excited you're very interested you're inspired to do it but Turning up at like second year, third year to run it again, it's, it's, it takes us so much more perseverance, so much more structure, so much more discipline uh, to make it to that next level, right? And I think hard things about hard things gave me a lot of insights about, you know, that messy middle in a, in a business and an era in a, in a company and about ultimately, you know, how he thought about managing people, managing conflicts. Um, and it's told like a story. It's, it's a beautiful book, uh, quite thick as well. And I think uh, that's probably is one. Those are like the two books that I really, really uh, like. I started reading uh, Steve Jobs's autobiography. Uh, the problem with people like Steve Jobs is that their story is so well documented, right? And there's like, if you have been, I've always been following Steve Jobs in my life from YouTube and all the other places. So when I start reading the book, it was like, kind of know I know okay, this is this is famous Stanford's you know speech and we know what he did he was a shitty father he was a great innovator you know we knew a lot of things about him so some of the books I've not been able to make it through at the end um, so yeah um, so you answer question those two have been very influential uh, books for me in my life at the moment oh by the way uh, during COVID time I read Three books. I wouldn't say influential, but I found it to be really fun. Uh, Steal like uh, art. Steal like artists. Artists, yes. Show your work, and uh, I because Rabo is here, I wouldn't use the word, but uh, subtle art of not giving a right, uh, <laughs> right. And his and and uh, the second book. Uh, uh, second book is uh, what is everything is. It, right so those books found to be really good reads uh short small books but very inspiring very interesting to look at uh, things yeah fantastic we do have a few questions coming in uh somebody here wants to know an, an anonymous guest uh would like ben to know. <laughs> sorry apologies yes um somebody here would like to know if you use any speed reading and memory techniques when you read do you no, no, I, <laughs> I mean I, I've heard about this and I know Sanjeev very well who does the speed reading um, in, uh, in Sri Lanka, right? And uh, I, I, 
initially there was I, I I didn't know Sanjeev then, but I saw these uh, commercials on TV where you know people are reading the book like you know like this, right? I was like, wow, this is like finding kryptonite. I mean, this is like the best thing that ever happened. I mean, to be able to read a book that that it hadn't worked for me. I have tried. Um, the truth of the matter is, it hadn't worked for me. Uh, and I also have followed like people like Seth Godin and all those where they read about, I think close, they said they read about 300 books a year, right? And uh, so I, and the, in, the, in one of the questions he said, like the way he reads the book is he basically read the book until he understand the underlying concept or the principle of the book. After that, the rest of it is just his, you know, the author's way of justifying or building the case for that principle or the concept, right? Um, for me, I have this, maybe it is a psychological thing where I sometimes have this pressure on myself. I want to read the book into it. Like I have understood the book, like in the second or the third chapter. And like after that, I still feel like, uh, I still want to finish the book. You know, I feel it's incomplete and it's a bit of a psychological thing. I think it's a probably a bad idea. Uh, but uh, but this answer your question about speed reading and all that, I, I, I don't know whether it will work for me uh, because for me, I really want to understand the concepts behind some of these books I read. And it's also, I don't read fiction anymore, like as much. Um, so I, 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 yeah. If you, it works for you, it works for you. I, it, does, it didn't work, work for me and I, I don't, I think I'm too old to pick it up anyway. No? Yeah, you don't speed read, but you actually listen to audiobooks on 2X. So that is... A kind yeah. of a speed reading there. Yeah. I, I'm very curious to know if our other uh, attendees here uh, are uh, speed reading or do any of our attendees use any memory techniques? Let us know in the comments if you are. That'd be very interesting to find out how many of our attendees are actually using speed reading. For me personally, I, I have not uh, found it to work for me. Maybe I'm not doing it well. Uh, but yeah. I actually like to take my time with my books. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think there's a bit of a bit of a bit a fakeness in it also to be very honest with you personally it's like it's like this right it didn't work for you it didn't work for me it's probably it's our fault maybe the technique doesn't work right? there's no way for us to know i am yet to come across people who say oh it really works it's you can read books like that and they can refer to like the 40 second page third paragraph i don't know i don't i don't believe in that so much i don't think it's really that possible maybe you can read fast. but one thing i know one of my uh, lecturers in university told me is that when you have practice for reading the number of words you capture in your eye span increases like today if i'm taking three words per session per time when i'm read it can she said uh, she can go up to about 10 words like or seven words in one time maybe that's the way that you do it um it hadn't worked for me krishna sorry Maybe it has worked for somebody here on our conversation. Let us know if it worked for you, anybody who's joining us uh, on the call. All right, we do have a few more questions coming in, Rohan. And there's somebody here who actually knows you as one of his best CIM lecturers. So, wow. <laughs> so he would like to ask you, how would you make your students read marketing-related books? <laughs> First of all, I, that's a paid commercial. I paid that guy to say that I'm a best lecturer. <laughs> right, Raghu, I apologize, man. Uh, what to do, right? Um, so, <laughs> no, I think, um, I, I don't think you should force people to do it, right? I, I, I don't think, you know, today the way that you can consume, like I have now such a big consumer of uh, podcasts, right? And I listen to a lot of stuff on YouTube. Like I will work on my email and I'll have YouTube playing in the uh, a video of a, a particular speech from someone or whatever listening for. So I think we need to kind of, uh, kind of, I think for me, the biggest thing that really helps with books is the fact that I'm a firm believer that, you know, reading this rearranges the brain cells in a way that helps you to, you know, structure your thoughts, structure your brain, structure your nerve systems in a better way. I'm a firm believer. I don't have scientific facts. There could be an article about it here and there, but the point is I believe that. And I also believe that if you could wake up in the morning and read books before you start the day, your brain kind of uh, structures itself better. That's my belief. So as a result, I'll always try to do this. And if I go on a holiday, I always carry it. I'll try to read it and all that. But we also have like so much of work we need to now fit into our world 
and as a result you may not always find time to do this and as a result sometimes you consume today i consume books on as as i said podcast um you know and, and audio and whatever you try to fit into your life span lifestyle as much as possible that's what um, i actually do yeah and about the cim student thing right uh marketing marketing related books oh <laughs> uh, the the toughest part in any 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 anywhere is to read books which are textbooks and i will tell you that even for me reading a textbook is such a bore it's ah uh, like i'm that's reading this book yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i mean that's the truth right and it's almost like i have to force myself to read like i'm reading this textbook which is about 300 pages that advanced analytics for business it's a huge textbook type of a thing recommended reading oh it's it's tough it's tough but uh, i mean sometimes you got to do it as i said for the kids why i don't really ask them to read the marketing related books isn't so much because i don't tell them uh, not that i don't want them to read i just think that they have to find a mechanism that works for them maybe audio books is the way to go for sure all right we do have another question coming in somebody mm-hmm. here would like to know what do you think about robin sharma's work do you read robin sharma no Oh, you don't. Okay. I, Krishma, you and I, you and I had this conversation. This is where it goes a little bit off, the, off, the, off the plan conversation about me trying to be nice and listen. I think certain things I don't. I have a. I I try to look at the world the way it is as much as possible and with its misery, with its happiness, with its joy. And I think there are some of the stuff are very philosophical, and I find it hard to relate to some of those concepts. Like I think. for me i never try to read read uh, things like the secret i think the the book secret right i mean and then robin sharma and then we also have this guy what's his uh, this very famous guru who has this amazing set of books Sadhguru. who goes around does it huh sadguru i know the it. us guy the us guy, i forget his name um tony robins uh, tony robins right yeah. so i mean i think he they the ultimately what you have to realize is that most of these are also like there is a little bit of commercial incentive behind this as well um i think just because it had worked for someone if it works for you i'm not here to judge i'm not going to say don't read it uh, i don't believe in it so i don't read those stuff right i don't read robin sharma's and all that i think those are very philosophical as the same thing i told about autobiographies some of the autobiographies it doesn't excite me because the reason is on my lifestyle my current day world i see is so different i will read elon musk i will read uh, some of the books like peter thiel i will read gary vaynerchuk by the way gary vaynerchuk jab jab right who i'm sure uh, dilip will also talk about it next week um, you know gary vaynerchuk um, some of these book i want to read uh, sonny bill williams autobiography by the way it just got launched last week and i was fascinated to you know he's one of the sportsmen um i'd love to read autobiographies from sportsmen um who who are contemporaries today right um so those are the things that they really excite me some of the other stuff are philosophically makes you feel really good about it but i don't know whether you can really apply it to your current day life uh, for me it doesn't excite me so so self help and philosophy is not your preferred genre you prefer things no. uh, like no, technology no, no. business <laughs> not really <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Honestly, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's right. say that. <laughs> We do have somebody here who is asking us. Um, sure. In an MBA class, you said that you were addicted to meditation. So tell us more about that. Meditation. <laughs> do you meditate? No, I never said that. <laughs> who said that? <laughs> I mean, listen. I mean, people. A couple of my friends have been told, telling me about, oh, you really should try yoga and all that. I think there's a space. for me over a period of time for that i'm not there yet um obviously i'm a huge advocate of you know health and fitness and stuff like that i think people should do it i started very recently and as a result i think it's something that everybody should pay attention to so i really think there's a benefit on it um i think if you have a bit of a uh, workout in the morning that energy flows through the entire day and that's a amazing people people know it really works um i think as you grow older you want to work, focus on, on your mobility and other stuff but listen meditation i am not got there yet uh, <laughs> maybe i will i'm not that spiritual i think i think that yeah, self help and me- meditation doesn't work for me yeah sorry if i have miscommunicated to you in the mba class uh, 
that was not my intention. <laughs> well, somebody else here would like to yeah. know um, if you read anything related to quantum physics, especially things oh. like quantum entanglement and things like that. Yeah, I, I'm, I've been over the last maybe. This is what happens when you are in a lockdown. You find try to find stuff. As I said, I don't try to restrict and say I want to read about this. I try to pick different things. So I've been very fascinated about. Um, actually, the fascination starts started with uh, Einstein's uh, um, kind of a lifestyle and some of the things that he spoke about. The fact that we found this Higgs boson about few years ago in the sun. Um, and as a result, like, you know, things he, he professed and he kind of mathematically proved 100 years ago. Now we are finding the actual proof of it. And then that led me to discover because the, the, the problem we have is that we have two kind of a theories. The Einstein, one is the Einstein space time uh, and different type of a couple of theories, uh, special relativity theory and relativity theory. And then to describe the smaller elements of the world, we have the quantum mechanics. Uh, we can't connect with these two and they find... Okay, I think I'm boring you. Um, the point I'm saying is, yes, I'm really interested in the quantum uh, mechanics these days and I've been reading about it. I'm also interested, very weirdly, uh, finding the planet nine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate. I think, uh, you know, Pluto is now downgraded. It's not a planet. Uh, I, I absolutely, absolutely, within my belief, I have absolute belief within next 10 years, we will find a planet in the, the, the most almost the similar size as Neptune outside. Uh, so yeah, it's fascinating stuff. But nothing to do with books though. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and quantum physics, those are the things that interest you and fascinate you. Um, yeah. Well, somebody here would like to know if you have any podcast sites that you would recommend to consume yeah. some uh, good material. Yeah, I think I think there are a couple actually I, I can actually recommend. Uh, if you're interested in more of the current day stuff, uh, I'm I've been following Chamit Pali a bit. I don't know how many of you know him. Uh, he's one of those guys who really caught my attention over the last maybe four or five years, and I've been following him. And he has he takes part in this incredible podcast called All in One. Uh, it's on YouTube. I think it's all in. It's also at uh, Spotify as well. So I listen to that podcast a lot. Um, and also, uh, there is, um, I just subscribed to uh, this particular, hold on, let me just tell you the name, I, I might forget it, uh, the particular couple of, uh, more than podcasts, like especially on YouTube, few channels that I really follow, uh, let me just see whether I could find it in a hurry, uh, okay, I don't get it in my head right now, but a few places, um, I probably can maybe connect. You guys, there's the really good places I found is CNBC has this tremendous like 20 minute kind of a series that is out there that talks about like, for example, electric vehicles and uh, robotics and all those different things about how the world, how does Amazon make money? How does, uh, you know, all these different topics which are really, really fascinating. Uh, the one particular uh, thing I've been following, just give me one second, let me just dig that up. I apologize for it, Trish. Uh, this is what happens when you're in a... Okay. Barclay Haas Alumni Alumni Network. Yes. Uh, yep. Barclay Haas Alumni Network. Um, I think I subscribed. There's some very interesting stuff there. Yeah. These are the stuff that keeps me busy these days. So I can recommend you to go and check it out as well. Yeah. All right. So those are... Um, well, we already spoke about autobiographies, but uh, yeah. there is somebody who's still asking oh, if you have any autobiographies that you would like to recommend. Sorry, would you mind repeating the question? I didn't hear yes, you. Autobiographies, autobiographies. Yeah. Do you have any that yeah. you recommend apart from the one by uh, Andre Agassi? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Short answer. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, listen, I, I, as I said, I mean, uh, it's a very easy to recommend things like Steve Jobs. For me, as I said, it didn't work for me because I have anyway been a follower of his life uh, from the time he gave this you know, like the God's second coming kind of a thing in 2003 and launched iPhone and 2000, sorry, Max in 2003 and 2007 iPhone. And I've been following his life uh, a lot. So as a result, I found that book to be uh, really difficult to read. But I'll tell you one book I haven't got and I'm trying to read. It's the same author. There's this very famous guy, Isaac, uh, who wrote uh, Steve Jobs' autobiography. He released autobiography about a lady who is doing some work in STEM. Um, 
um, you know, uh, especially around the genes and few things. Um, and I think I would really love to read that autobiography. I haven't got it in my hand yet. I will definitely be reading Sonny Bill Williams' uh, book um, as well. Those are the two books. If you ask me as autobiographies, I will read now. But is there anything that I've read I can recommend? No, nothing. Uh, yeah. One thing about, you know, even why I loved uh, Peter, uh, sorry, Andre Agassi's uh, book, Open, is the fact that it demonstrates the competitive nature of today's world where if you want your son or your daughter to succeed by 18, 20 in a sport or anything, the decision isn't really the child's. The decision is the parent's. The parent has to invest the time and the money and the effort to get the child prepared if they want their child to perform at that world-class, Olympic, whatever level. Because by the time the child decides for themselves, it's already too late for them. Uh, that is a common thing because Andrea Gassi's father drove him telling the mother that I'm taking my son, son to the school, didn't take him to school, took him to the tennis court and forced him to play. So he talks about while he became so good in tennis, how much he hated playing it. But he also says that I didn't know any other thing to do because all my life, this is all I knew. So he kind of talks about that side of tennis as well. I think it's a very fascinating story. Uh, yeah, I think it can relate to today's, some of this. Um, you know, tennis players having a lot of mental issues as well. <laughs> well, what about your family, Rohan? Are you the only one reading or do you have other family members who are also involved if they have it? I, I, I think uh, my wife reads a lot more than I do. Uh, obviously, because it's part of, I think it's, she has a bit of an advantage because it's part of her job as well, because she's in academics, right? Uh, however, um, my sons are quite young, so I kind of ask them to read a lot. Uh, my son started reading uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, the series. Yes. yes. Right. Uh, so my elder one loves it and he started reading it. We try to get him as many books as possible. My younger one hasn't really found anything yet. Uh, he's more of the creative one, I think. Um, so as I said, I'm not trying to force them. I don't think reading should be forced down on anyone and told people. I think people should discover it and enjoy it. I always say that sometimes we put so much of pressure on ourselves and make it a task. The moment you make it a task, you start, the one you enjoy, you start hating. Um, and I think the idea is not to make it a task. Well, uh, Dominika Vimalaratna has a question for you. He's yeah. asking if there are any books that you have read which have been converted to movies. And Rohan, oh, uh, <laughs> we're talking about this. We're talking about oh, this. Listen, I, I personally think... Um, I have yet to, I don't know whether I can name and say these books are converted to movies or whatever, right? But having said that, I will tell you whatever. Um, all the books that I've converted to movies, I think vast majority of the people will say have done absolute rubbish with the movie, right? Uh, because I think it, the reason, I think we discussed this, Trishma, I think the reason why it is so is that the, the a book is a very personal experience. When we start getting lost in these pages, our imagination, the way we even, even the author might describe a scenario, the way that each of us will decode in our heads are so unique and so different. And what a movie maker will do is a version of that. It might be right for someone, but it may not be right for you. And as a result, I think there's a huge challenge uh, of meeting the expectations a lot. I'm yet to come across anyone who said, okay, you know, this particular movie did justice to the book. Um, I think the only movies which are better than books are Twilight. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I know I'm, I'm being petty here now. <laughs> right? So, yeah, I think, I, I think every other movie is bad than the book uh, I have uh, come across. Um, I'm just asking myself whether there's anything well, that so I have... Asking uh, you for, now you've read The Da Vinci Code and whether you saw... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That particular one, I read the book, I think, before watching the movie. Okay. Um, I, I think it's a very interesting topic. Uh, but, uh, of course, and then you can say that Angels and Demons and everything I read before uh, before the movies came out. Um, even the Inferior, in, uh, Inferno, which was his uh, I think last book. Um, I, I, I think the books are better. I mean, it's always better. I don't know. I, I will, I'm like, I will, I will go to the 
go on a limb and say that books will always be better than movies for sure for me okay um here we have another question asking how will you motivate a non reader to read books okay what do you have to say to everybody who's not reading currently okay can i can i answer one i saw a question can i just answer that and come to your question sure, so first sure. of all i just reminded me two books i enjoyed in my teenage years were the sherlock holmes books i was fascinated i got the uh, sherlock holmes the big one which has a lot of short stories in it and a one another book which has like four four stories about him right uh, i still have it in my this thing i bought it i don't read it but it's a collection thing for me the reason why i love that book is again a lot of this um, obviously sherlock holmes itself is awesome the english in that book uh during my era where i was trying to get better at english the way that they speak and all the little bit older english and i was so fascinated to hear the way they speak like would you drag you know brought your fair you know chair here and favor me with some details i mean the way they the some of the terms they use is so different rather than say tell me what just happened right? so um so i i'm a huge fan i started reading lord of the rings uh couldn't get through uh didn't like it um started reading harry potter didn't like it i've never read harry potter so i know that people are going to hate me right now for this but hey yes. this is it's it's what it is right um then answering your question what was the question would you mind repeating that krish uh, yes how can you motivate a non reader to read books um i think personally uh the way for me is that it's always a evolution uh, you need to start somewhere don't force as i said don't feel the pressure that just because we are talking about all these titles and all that for me one of the things i started for me it was one of the bigger drivers was looking at tintin and asterix and stuff like that to be able to say you know my imagination started coming from seeing those books which are more visually driven than even the words then came the hardy boys and yes i read famous five but i didn't really understand them as much and i didn't enjoy it as much but then you know when you go through that kind of phase of evolution and then you start reading about hardy boys and which are simpler books which are more adventurous i think it's really important to, i think the key is that finding something that you are curious about that you want to kind of dug dig a little bit deeper right so i think that ways a very good way and if you can find that book and books and start reading that and don't let anyone tell like you know kind of ridicule you like i've read daniel steel i've read all of daniel steel i mean it's the same story in various ways in daniel steel right they fall in love they get married they have kids they get divorced they find love i mean that's the story i mean that's it in daniel steel right but essentially uh the the point i'm saying is that you know if you think uh, don't ever say that i want to be a fiction i mean don't go in this all these unnecessary classifications about what type of books you read and how it is find something that you are curious about finding couple of books about it but one of the things about book selection i do is that i kind of do i'm a little bit selective about reviews and as i said i really try to read books which are closer to this year i don't try to go back and read the books that have been written in 1990s in 80s and 70s unless it's a classic like whatever um, so that's that's the way i would advise you guys pick a book from for, for something that you're curious about it could be technology it could be it could be mystery it could be murder it could be anything and that's a fascinating way to uh, evolve your thinking and mind we just have about um, let's say about 6 7 minutes before we wind up so i'll just probably take two questions we do have two questions here uh, ramon is asking us if you read a book at a time and you finish it or do you read multiple books at once i read multiple books at a time Okay. um i'm i'm as i said right now i'm i'm doing this textbook here i'm reading this for when i'm when i want to have find a little bit of inspiration and a little bit of a time to think about it uh when i'm making a presentation and all that i download a book about that particular topic and i listen to it on the way and coming back so it's for me is to preparation work um so i i handle multiple thing i think that's a way to uh, do it um uh yeah i think the short answer is you can read multiple books and i think the other thing is that i never tried it but i i think people have suggested that you don't have to start the book from the beginning and end at the end like especially when you're reading not the fictional book but non fiction book i mean if you find a chapter that you're really interested you can flip to that read that chapter and maybe that's it you want to read for a while after that I mean, that's fine i think these are little bit mental blocks that we have put in in our head saying that oh i have to start from 
you know forward all the way to chapter 1 and then go to the i think you don't need to have structure on it as long as you pick up page uh, pick up a book and read about 5 to 10 pages every day i think that's fascinating i don't do it but i think that's a that's a really good way to do it yeah another question we have here is um if you can name a few management books which must be read by senior level management in an organization oh god <laughs> um i i don't so i apologize i don't have anything top of the mind that i can tell you right now uh, i'm reading this particular book by uh, it's a little bit harder to find this particular book but it's a modern book i think it came out last year by an author called mike walsh uh, he he has a book called the algorithmic leader um, i think it's about preparing organizations with the upcoming i mean you understand the thematic right i'm i'm in this space so i'm kind of more tilted than i'm more bending towards those things uh, it's about how do you find productivity in a world of automation how do you work with algorithms how do you find you know type of thing i think it's a great book to prepare leaders for the organizations from either getting disrupted or becoming redundant or irrelevant um, so for me i think that's a great book to read um, i also don't try to recommend uh, leadership because leadership is a very personal thing uh, and a very individual thing um and everybody is different right so yeah i mean i think some people might find inspiration from mahatma gandhi some people might find inspiration from from uh, from gary vaynerchuk very com- opposite type of personality so to speak but uh, you know with what what works for you fantastic uh well we just have a few more minutes left perhaps i'll just take this yeah. one question um if a youngster wants to become a successful entrepreneur how is reading going to help them that's the question <laughs> okay um we have few minutes and i don't think we can cover this topic <laughs> question in there uh, i'm available on any of the social media one uh, points please reach out to me and ask me this question i'm happy to give you an answer uh, the only thing i can tell you is the two things i can tell you is that first uh, you have to solve a big enough problem for a big enough audience what i mean by a big enough problem is are people finding it big enough problematic enough that they are willing to pay money uh, to get it solved big enough audience is that does that problem exist for thousands of people number one number two is that you don't necessarily have to have a poetic earth shattering you know kind of an idea it could be something that you can do better than someone else doing um and okay one other thing is that uh, if you are a young person uh, don't feel the pressure you want to be an entrepreneur now i mean there's no rule saying you have to be an entrepreneur at 20s you can be an entrepreneur at 30s you can be an entrepreneur at 40s average age of some of the great uh, entrepreneurs have been late 30s and late 40s so maturity network skill set structure discipline these matter for entrepreneur you don't have to be at 20s and talking about entrepreneurship as well so yeah reach out to me i'd love to talk to you separately on that all right you're almost running out of time i know ramon has asked us another question about whether you take notes when you read books but you've already answered that so uh, we yep. will uh, talk about that right now uh, but in closing rohan if there's anything you'd like to share with everybody about the power and the impact of reading that it has had on your life what would you like to say in closing any thoughts i mean i have mentioned this to you so, i mean today i i have this habit of going to airports early because i want to spend the time in in the in the in the in the in the, in the book stores there in airport because airports have been the best place to find and i've spent hours uh, looking for books and i bought six seven books outside because just because uh, before the kindle and everything that's the only way to get some of the latest books in uh, for you to read um i think for me uh, I, this is a life long habit and i'm glad that i picked it up and i have such a when i was preparing only i just remembered even colosena fonseca and all those authors that are just like very nostalgic for me right and i realized that there's a huge history and a road map leading up to this point while i'm talking about augmented now right um so i think uh, pick it up start the habit don't feel the pressure enjoy it but just try to get like a couple of pages in every day and make it a habit um as i said read books that are curious don't go to... oh my god Trish, are you all right I am okay I am online but we just had a electricity outage here so no from the show Prabhu, goes I told on. you this man yes. Prabhu I, I told like you this was... All right I'm Prabhu. here I'm here Rohan don't worry uh um... no, I was going to say Raghu I told you this is what happens when you interview people like me <laughs> I'm 
All right, but but we do have Raghunan here. So as we wrap up, perhaps yeah. I'd like to ask Raghunan if he'd like to share a few things with us. Now, before I go further, let me just finish my train of thought. So sure. what I'm saying is that don't feel the pressure that someone recommend this, you know, world class classic legendary author and the book series that you you have to read it and you have to enjoy it i mean that's a common mistake as i said i will i'm very upfront that i haven't read harry potter i never want to read harry potter because i don't think i'm going to enjoy it like lord of the rings people look at me like oh how can you be a book reader as it is? i mean don't get into that pressure if you like something just read that and that's that's really really okay um lead go where you you know kind of a you know where your curiosity curiosity leads you and that is the key to finding great uh, things about looking up raghu what do you mean atrish is back yes raghu would you like to say a few words yeah thank you rohan it was an awesome inspiration i guess one hour of inspiration so many books i just wanted to say thank you i think 5 years back at a bna event you proposed this book to as a recommendation the charisma myth hope you remember that the very yeah. i think the very after the event i actually sent a message asking Uh, I, I actually forgot the name of it. And you referred me, I think, five years ago. I mean, I, this book I'm re-reading, re-reading always. It has fantastic techniques. Thanks for that. I think fantastic and inspirational thoughts, uh, Rohan. I think the last book you referred was uh, this one, right? Code Breaker. Code Breaker. Okay, yeah. listen, I'm going to leave one book that really inspired me. I just remembered now. Atomic Habits. All right. Right. I'm going to leave that with everyone who's here and also for Raghu. Atomic Habits. It's a... actually a life changing kind of a book for me i am i've just finished reading it here uh, last maybe 10 20 pages that's why i didn't talk about it uh, it's about forming habits that really shape you and make you better sorry i go ahead that's no where i i don't remember but i'm glad so glad that you remember <laughs> yeah yeah thank you rohan it was awesome and i think i yeah. we discussed i mean you discussed and you spoke about close to on 20 plus books in this uh, within an hour's time that's awesome inspiration rohan thank you so much <laughs> no problem Over to you, Trishna. Thank you, Rahul and Rohan. We're almost coming to the end of our time here together. But on behalf of all of us here at Pickaboo, we'd like to say a big thank you for sharing your time, your insights, all of your uh, uh, reading material that you recommend. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. I'm sure everybody agrees that it's been a fun conversation, something uh, quite different from what we're used to because uh, you've been so open about your uh, outlook on the world. So thank you for that. Um, with that, ladies and gentlemen, as we say, thank you to Rohan Jamil for joining us in this segment of Pick Books Why I Read. I hope that this uh, this has provided all of you with immense opportunity to be inspired to pick another book to encourage you to pursue knowledge for your personal and professional growth as well. So with that, we are wrapping up this segment. Thank you once again, Rohan, for joining us. Thank you to all the ladies and gentlemen joining us via Zoom and Facebook. And with that, we wish you a pleasant week ahead. Happy reading and we'll see you at another segment of Why I Read. See you later, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, guys. Thanks a lot for having me. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Rohan. Okay, bye, guys.